We're starting on the bottom of the Futes Samud Beis, where it says, Rav Nochas Lataman, two lines from the bottom. Yomar is discussing halachas of uh, Bosar that are found in different uh, locations, different uh, instances, if they're kosher or not. So the Gemara continues on this subject, Benigei to Rav when he came to Bavel, and this uh, halachas that the Gemara is going to discuss here is known in the Bavli and in halacha as Bosar Shanis Alim and Ayin. Meat that was left unattended to, so then you can't eat it because you don't know what happened to it. So let's see the stories here. The Gemara brings four or five different stories about this subject. Rav Nochas Litamon, Rav went down over there to Bavel. Hamson, he saw Makilin, that they were very lenient regarding the halachas of Kashrus. So he was machma with them. And the first story that he saw was as follows Chad Barnash Ozel, the person that went. Boi Meshizge. Askupte begoy nare. He wanted to rinse off his meat, parts, different parts of the meat, by the river. The inshisa, and he forgot it. He left it over there, and he left. The azalein, he left. And chazar, he came back. Boy, miss vina. He wanted to go and take this meat that he left there. So this is basas and salamani. Amalei rav. So rav tells him asalocha. This is not allowed for you. You're not allowed to take it. The no Omar, because I say, Hahi Shotaf Nara. I'll say to you that the one that you left there, maybe the river washed it away. And Vaisi Khuri the Nevela Tuchtoi. And the river brought up another it, it, it brought to the shore another piece of meat that's Nevela, that's not kosher. How do you know that this is the same piece of meat if you leave it there in this alam and ayin, so you can't use it anymore? That's one incident. Another incident, Chad Barnash Avimahalach Peshuke. A person was walking in the street in the marketplace, Ton Kupad, and he was carrying a piece of meat with him. Asa Daisa, the Chatfase Mina. A Daisa, which is the Daya bird that's mentioned actually in this week's Parsha, Asha Shmini, came and grabbed away this piece of meat from him, from him that he was carrying. With Tolkase, and it, it dropped it off, so the bird dropped this piece of meat somewhere. Or uh, so it seemed at least. Chazar boy misvina. So this person went to look for it. He wanted to go take this piece of meat that the bird took away from him. Amalei rav asalacha. It's not allowed for you. You can't go and take that piece of meat. The no omar because I say, basar the nevela havas. That maybe this piece of meat that you'll go and find, maybe that's really a nevela. The nevela havas teina because maybe this bird was carrying also a nevela. Vitalkase, and that's what it dropped, and that's what you found. Vinosva hahu ochruna. And that other piece of meat that was kosher, that it took from you, maybe the bird took that with itself, and that's not what it dropped over here. So, how do you know? So, you can't take it. Third story. This is not regarding meat, this is, this is regarding wine. Ginoi shotav zikin. The river Ginoi washed away barrels of wine. And then those bar- there were barrels of wine that appeared again on the shore, and they weren't sure if this, could they use it. There's the same barrels of wine or not? Azov the kumer of Yitzchak bar Abelazar. So the question was asked to Yitzchak bar Abelazar, and Vamar and he said, Yechkemun shafia kitrehoin. The ones that pour these barrels, they they, they 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 close these barrels and they pour from these barrels, so they have to inspect. Yechkemun means they should inspect kitrehoin, the knots of how they closed it. To see if they recognize, is this, is this the barrels, the way they tied it closed? If they recognize specifically knots that they made, so then they could use these barrels of wine. Another story, Nikonika, Ishtakach Beknishta de Buli. There were bottles of wine that were found in the shul in the city Buli. So they didn't know where it came from, they didn't know if they could use it or not. Also, of the Komer Rabbi Yirmiya, came in front of Rabbi Yirmiya, Omar, and he said, Yishakmuns Kuraya Avitehoin. So they should inspect the Sukraya as the ones that would make like a sign with a paint. Sukraya is usually red paint. They should inspect and see the color of the paint that there is on this wine bottle if they recognize it. And if they do, then you could drink the wine. Another story, Gedit Sli, a roasted Gedi, a roasted goat meat. Ishtakach be Israti de Gufsa was found in the street of the city Gufsa. Vihitiruhu, and over here actually, they did say that it was permitted to use. And Mishum Shneid Varim, and the Hatta was for two things. Mishum Metziah, first of all, the Hatta was that you can keep it 
It's a metziah that you don't have to call out to give it back to the owner, you can keep it. And also, And also that you can rely on the kashras, that it's good because of most people that were going in the way over there are Yidin. And the Gemara now spells it out. They were matter it to be used and it doesn't have to be called out. The Tani, because it says, If you save something from a lion that was going to attack someone or attacked a place and it was going to take something and you saved it. Miyada Gaius from an army that was attacking a place. Mishuna Sayama, Mishuna Sanar from a big wave of uh, the sea, from the, from, the, from the ocean, from the river. Or Mesratya Gedayla, something that you find in a big Rishus Arabim, in a big street. Or Miplatya Gedayla, a big plaza, you find it there in the middle. In all these cases, you don't have to call it out. The owners that lost it there, long were Miyayish. They long gave up. Once you're Miyayish, so then you don't have to call it out anymore. That was the heter for Metziah. And also, Mishum Reiv Mahal Chedrachim, the heter, that it's kosher, because of most people walking there, Mishum Shchitas Nachri, that you don't have to be concerned about the fact that a guy may, may have shechted this, and it's not kosher. In that place, there was mostly Yidin, so you can rely on that to eat it. And Veshtakach, and then they ended up finding out, Me'amin Bebeis Rebbe, that this meat came from the house of Rebbe, so it was a, the heter was correct. What's the first reason of, of Metziah that was? The owner is Mayayish. It was found in a place in the middle of a big street. And therefore the owner that left it there, there are He's so many people. It's not a Shaila, it's a, it's a Shaila, no. Shaila who it belongs to? There's two questions. It's a Shaila who it belongs to, do you have to call it out? And then there's the Shaila of Kashras. And they were matered mitzad both of these things. The Gemara now brings another story with the exact same aloha. So they found also... Uh, uh, Igul de Guvna, a ball of a, or a round piece of cheese was found. Ishtakach, they found it, Bepundike de Levi. In the Pundik, in the inn where Levi was. Ve'etiruhu, and they allowed it as well, Mishum Shnei Dvarim, because of these two issues that we mentioned, Mishum Metziah, they said you don't have to call it out for anybody, you can keep it. Or Mishum Reiv Malche Drachim, and also most people there are were yidden. Tony, as we just said, you save it from all these places, you find it in all these places. It's yours. The owner gave up on it. Yeah, you don't have to be concerned that this came from a guy, a cheese from a guy, because in that place it was all yidden. And in this case as well, ben Find out afterwards that this cheese belonged to Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Yaisi. Amar Rav Mana kum Rabbi Yaisi. So Rabbi Mana said in front of Rabbi Yaisi, "Va'anon chamin Rabbanon machrizin." I saw Rabbanon that found things in this kind of instance in a street, in a place, in a big rishus harabim, where you just said you don't have to call it out because the owner is meyayish. And I saw the Rabbanon that find it, and they do, they do announce it for to, to, like the halacha of Ashavas Aveda. Omalei, so he answered him, At in Havisa Mashkach, if you would have been the one to find this, Loi Nasvis, you wouldn't take it for yourself? Rabbi Yaina Avuch, Rabbi Yaina, your father, Loi Amake, did not say so. Elo Oma, he said, Halavai, Kad Nishkach, Halavai, it should be that if I find something, if I find a Metzia, Nishkach min Piyusa Ulegavo. I should find it from Piyusa, which is a place, a fork in the road where there was a lot of people there. If I, should, if I should find it from there going outward or going inward into the street over there. And therefore I won't have to call it out. So he himself said that if I'm going to find a Metzia, I should find it in a place where I can keep it for myself. But then the Gemara concludes, Afila Cain, even though Rabbi Yaina himself said this, Ashkach, when he found it in such a place, in a street, in a fork in the road where many people were there, and you don't have to call it out, you don't have to announce it, he did not take it for himself. Even in such a place where you know that the owner was Miyayish, you should announce it to return it to the owner. This is brought actually in Shulchan Aruch as well, that even though in many cases when the owner is Miyayish, there is no mitzvah of a Shabbos Aveda, but nevertheless, you should announce it, you should be Mekayim a Shabbos Aveda. Zakta Mishnah, going back to the point that we spoke about in the previous Mishnah about different things that were lost in places and we're trying to figure out what it is. So here the Mishnah talks about a different karbonis. Behemesh and Nimtas, an animal that's found. Mirushalayim, from Yerushalayim, va'ad Migdal Eder, until Migdal Eder. Or Kimidas, which is not far from Yerushalayim. So any animal found in that area, 
And not only in that direction, from Yerushalayim to Migdal Eder, but Okimidosa Lachol Ruach, the same uh, distance from Yerushalayim on all other sides around Yerushalayim, just as far as Migdal Eder is on that side. So you found animals in those areas, so then Zacharim Oilis. If you found animals that are Zacharim, that are fit to be brought as a carbon oila, you know that these animals are carbon, carbonous oilis. Nekevais, if you found Nekevais, Zivchei Shlomim. Shlomim can be brought from an oila or a Nekeva, so you know that it's a Shlomim. So then it's, it's brought as a Shlomim. The Mara is going to talk about this more in detail, we'll see. Rabbi Yudha, Imer Rabbi Yudha says, Haroi Lepsachim, if you found animals that could be used for a carbon Pesach, Lepsachim, Kaidim, Leregel, Lamed Yoyim. So that will be brought, that has to be brought as Psachim, if it's within 30 days before the Yom Tif, which will be within 30 days, so Sherlin, Bedarshim, Hilchas Achag, people start preparing, so you know that it was designated for a carbon Pesach. Bari Shaina in the beginning, Hoyimimashkinin es Moitzeha, so those people that found these Karbonis, so they would take a mashkin from them. They would, in other words, force them to bring it as a carbon. And also, that he also has to bring the nesachim for this carbon. To bring the wine and the mincha, the, the flour that has to come along with the carbon. So the person that found the carbon was the one that was obligated to also provide the nesachim for the carbon. But then, so people saw that if I'm going to take this animal, and then I'm going to want to bring it as a carbon, they're going to force me to lay out money, for, or to give money from my own pocket for the Nesachim. So people just left it, they, just, they, they, they ran away, they didn't want to bother with this. So they skinu Bezdin, the Bezdin was Mesakin, Shiyu Nesachecha, Ba'am Mishal Tzibar. That when you find a lost behemoth that you know is a carbon, so you bring it as a carbon, but you do not have to provide the money for the Nesachim from your own pocket. It's brought from the Macht Sashako, from the Truma Salishka. That's where the money comes from. Now, in connection to this, the Gemara brings other examples of these t- kinds of takonist that the Bezdin made for different instances of Karbanis that are brought in the Beis HaMikdash. Amr Rav Shemin, Zayin, Dvarim, Meskinu, Bezdin. There are seven different things that the Bezdin instituted for the Karbanis in the Beis HaMikdash. The first one is the one that we just mentioned regarding lost Karbanis, that you take the Nesachim for these lost Karbanis from the Machtas HaShekah. And then the, Gemara, the Mishnah here is going to bring another six. Nachri, the second one is, a Nachri Shashalach Elosim Mimedin a guy that sends up a carbon that he donated. So he sends it, sends it from overseas, from a far place. Vishalach Imon Nesachim, and he sent along with the carbonus Nesachim. So Kreven Mishaloi, so then you bring the animal along with his Nesachim that he sent. But Vim Lav, if he did not send along the Nesachim for this animal, Kreven Mishal Tzibur. So you take from the Tzibur, from the Machtas HaShekel, to provide for the Nesachim of this Behemah. That's the second takana. And Vechain, the third takana, Ger Shemes Ve'eniach Zavachim, a Ger that died, and he left over Karbanis that he dedicated, and he never brought it. Im Yeshloi Nesachim, Kerevim Mishaloi, if he also donated the Nesachim, so you bring the Nesachim that he did, that he donated. Vim Lav, Kerevim Mishal Tzibor. If not, you take from the Machtas HaShakel for the Karbanis, the Nesachim for the Karbanis of the Ger. Another Tanai, a Tanai Bezdin Hu Al Koyen Godl Shemes, and it's a condition that Bezdin makes regarding a Kohen Gadol that dies. Shetehei, now the Kohen Gadol had an obligation to bring every single day a carbon Mincha, and it was divided actually, half, he brings half of it in the morning and half of it at night. So a Kohen Gadol that dies, Shetehei men chasai kreve mishal tzibur, even before they designated the, the, another Kohen Gadol, so his carbon Mincha should be brought from the Tzibur, from the Machtas HaShekel as well. Rabbi Yudha Aymer, no, Mishal Yerushin. The Yerushin are the one that bring his uh, carbon mincha, not from the Machtas HaShekel. The Shleimah is a kreva. When the, it's brought after the Kohen Gadol died, it's not brought like the Kohen Gadol brings it. The Kohen Gadol brings half in the morning and half at night. When it's brought from the Tzibor or from the Yerushim, the whole carbon mincha is brought together. Another takana that they made in the Beis Hamikdash, part of these seven takanas, ala melach vale eitzim. There's the, the the salt and the wood that was used to salt the karbanis and to burn the karbanis on the mizbeach. She yekayinim noisim behen, that the kainim should be allowed to have a no of the salt to salt the meat that they're going to eat from the karbanis and to use the wood to to cook or to roast the meat that they're going to eat. Another try was another takana vala pada shlayiya mailim ba'afra regarding the ashes of the pada aduma that there's no mi'ila in these ashes. 
And another takana was Valakin in Hapsulois, she buys Mishal Tzibur. Uh, a woman that donated the money for her kinen, for her birds that have to be brought as a carbon for her, and then later was found to be puzzle. So it has to be brought again, and this woman doesn't know of this. Who's going to take the responsibility to bring these karbanas again for her? So it comes from the tzibur, from the machtas shekel. You take the money and you bring it for this woman, for this, for the owner of this carbon, so that she should have the kapara. Rabbi Yaisi, I met. Rabbi Yaisi says no differently. The supplier that would supply the birds for this woman, for the Karbanis, who Mesapik is Apsilis. He is the Psulais, that is. He is the one that will have to provide a replacement for the birds that became possible. Right? So in other words, ah, yeah, it was mentioned before, correct? I think this was what was mentioned before, yeah. Uh, before the Gemara brought it in Bashem Rab Yitzchak. Tanai Bezn Hamasapik is Akinin, yeah. So before it brings it B'Shem Rabbi Yitzchak here, it says Rabbi Yaisi. And I'm not sure if I typed the Gemara yesterday exactly correctly, but the Pshat over here, at least what I saw the Mepharshim say over here is, that just like regarding all Karbanis in the base of Mikdash, there was a supplier for the Karbanis, from who, you brought, bought, from who they bought all the Karbanis. So there was the supplier of the birds. So this supplier, there's a Takana. You want to be the supplier of the birds of the base of Mikdash? You're going to have to take the responsibility that if that bird turns out to be possible, you're going to have to replace it for them. The same thing with Bahamas, right? We had also. But there was actually Machloikis about that, if you remember. There was one opinion that said that no, that he gets paid right away, and we, re- we rely on the and he, that the Kainim did that properly. Talk to Gemara, Rab Hoishim. Uh, he's not. It's a Takon. It's a Takon is Chazal. It's not his fault, but that's a Takon is Chazal that he has to take the responsibility. This is a very big uh, customer that he has here, the Beis Amikdor. So that, that's a Takon of Chazal. No, it's not. No, no, it's a Takon of Chazal. Yeah, it's a Takon of Chazal. That, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the Gemara now goes to the first section of the Mishnah, where the Mishnah said that if you find the lost animals, so then, so what do you do? So you have to bring the animals of the, the Shadim should be brought as Eilis, and that the ones that are on a Kavis should be brought as Shlomim. So the question over here is, how could you bring them as, a, how could you bring the animal which is uh, Shadim as Eilis? Do you know for sure that it's an Eila? You don't know for sure. So yeah, it's true, the, the, the Shadim are brought as Eilis. There are no Shlomim that are brought as Eilis as well. Of course, a Shlomim can be brought as Zachar or in a Kavis. So how could the Mishnah say that if you found the Zecharim, it's for sure brought as Eilis? So the Gemara is going to bring three Pshatim in this. Rab Haishia Rabba Omar, Rab Haishia Rabba said, It doesn't mean that you take these Zecharim that are found and you know for sure that it's an Eilah and you bring it as an Eilah. You can't bring it as an Eilah. You have to redeem it, you have to sell it, and then the money, that's what you bring as an Eilah. Actually, the Mepharshim explained that even the money, you can't bring only an oil of it. When you redeem it, so then you, what you're going to have to actually do is, if you want to take care of this, it's going to cost you money. You're going to have to bring two animals, one an oil and one a shlamim. And you're going to have to redeem it and say, if this animal I just found is an oil, so I'm redeeming it for another animal, and that other animal is going to be brought as an oil. And then there's another animal that I'm going to bring as a shlamim, as a donation. If the animal I found is a shlamim, then I'm going to bring another animal in its place as a shlamim, and then I'll bring also another carbon as an oila, as a donation. You're going to have to bring two to, because of the suffix that there is over here. So you really don't know. When the Mishnah said oilas, it means also oilas, not only oilas. You really don't know for sure that it's an oila. That was Rabbi Shir Rabbi's pshat. It twice. Yeah, it is. Omle Rabbi Yechenen, so Rabbi Yechenen says in this, how can you just redeem an animal which is, which is a uh, carbon? Do we tell a person to do such a thing? Go out and uh, the, be, be male in Kachim? What's the issue? Why being male in Kachim? So we had a few times before an animal which is a carbon, which is a tomim, has no mum. You're not allowed to go ahead and redeem it. Any animal that's puzzle or that's lost in this case and you have a suffix about it, you have to wait until it gets a mum usually. You can't just go ahead and redeem it this way. So how is Rabbi Yishia Rabbi saying that you just redeem it? Elo, so he says, what the Mishnah is saying is, if it's found to be a Zohar, so then it's an Ayla, because you go after the Rav. Rav, because all Zacharim are brought Ayla, so Rav is an Ayla if it's a Zohar. So you bring it itself, you don't have to redeem it. If Rav of it is, 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 Rav of the Zacharim are Ayla, 
and in Raiv Nekevais as if Cheshlamim. And we know that Raiv of the Nekevais as if Cheshlamim. Not different Pshatim of this Gemara, but this is the Pshat uh, that we're going to go with today. That um, you have to follow the Raiv of what Eilis have brought. Uh, if Raiv, the Raiv says that Zacharim are Eilis, and the Raiv says that the Nekevais as if Cheshlamim. And therefore we go according to the Raiv, and we don't have to redeem it. That's uh, Rabbi Yechenin's opinion. Frek the Gemara, how does this make sense? Ve'ena shlomim, bo'em min ha-zecharim. Shlomim cannot be brought from zecharim. How could Rabbi Yechenin say that, you say that roiv of the zecharim are brought eilis, and roiv of the nekevis are brought, are brought as shlomim. Yeah, it's true that nekevis can't be brought as eilis. So if you find nekevis, you know for sure that it's a shlomim. But how could you say the reverse regarding zecharim? That roiv of the zecharim are brought as eilis. It can be brought, or Zohar can be brought as an Ayla, and it can be brought as a Shlamim. This was really the original question that the Gemara was, was dealing with over here. So Rabbi Yechenin's answer is not understood. Yeah, so that's the question here. So the Gemara answers, Keitzad hu Aisa. So what do you do? According to Rabbi Yechenin, what are you supposed to do? Maitzi on Lechulin. You have to take these animals that you found and bring them out to Cholim. But according to Rabbi Yechelen's opinion, how do you bring them out to Cholim? Not like Rabbi Yishia Rabbi, that you just redeem them right away. You have to wait until it gets a mum. And after it gets a mum, that's how you take it out to Cholim, the way you usually do it. And then, V'chayzeh, Aysa, Aysa, and Aylis. And then you do like Rabbi Yishia Rabbi said, and you're going to have to bring an Ayla with that money. And this, just like he said before, that you're going to have to actually buy Two animals for an ayla and a shlamim, and you're gonna have to bring both because of a suffix. So when it's said in the Mishnah Ayla, it means also for an ayla. So we have two pshatim so far. Rabbi Shir Rabbi said you redeem it right away without waiting for it to get a mum. Rabbi Yechenen is saying that you have to wait until it gets a mum, then you can take it out from its status of being a carbon and you replace it by two animals, and you have to also have an ayla because it could have been an ayla. Um, Rabbi Zi'ira, third pshat, he says. No, no, no. You can use this animal itself and bring it as an oila. I, our question is, how do you know it's an oila? Maybe it's a shlamim. So he says, just like we say in another place. Tanai bezdenu ala meisris, there's a tanai bezden. So the leftover monies that there are from other karbanis, from a shlamim even. Shayikrivu oilis, that that leftover money should be used for an oila, even though it was designated for a shlamim. But there's a t'nai bezin, that whatever is going to be left over of your donation as a shlamim should be brought as an ayla. Kain at mar of hoch, so too you say here as well, t'nai bezdenu ala oivdois sheyikrivu oilis. There's a t'nai bezdin on the animals that are lost, that should be brought as an ayla. So there's a t'nai bezdin. But the Gemara says, how could you compare this? These two cases are not the same. Om rabbi yesil rabbi yakev baracha, ein ze meizid? Is this not amazing? In a case where a person donates money, and there there's leftover money from the shlomim, so there there's a t'nai bezin, you should bring it as an oila. But if you hear, the person is taking this very carbon that he found, that could be a shlomim, and he's been mazed going ahead and using it for an oila. He's mamish taking this carbon of a shlomim itself for an oila. How could you do that? So you can't really compare the two. On Malay, so the Gemara says, no, in fact, even you're right, it's taken not the same case. There's just leftovers of a shlomim, and the carbon shlomim was brought already. Here he's taking the shlomim itself, is bringing it as an oila. But, mikivin shu t'nai bezden, ain't that amazing? That's the t'nai bezden, there's no amazing here. This is the way bezden designed it, that if a, if a carbon is lost, as a t'nai bezden, that you should then take it to be brought as an oila. So the Mishnah means kipshutai, that you bring this carbon itself as an oila. Amarav Yaisi. So now the Gemara is going to continue. Uh, this is a, a quote that we, ha- that we had uh, before a few times, but the Gemara is continuing here. And we're going to discuss different halachas in the Gea to the carbon mincha that the Kayan God brought every day, which was brought here in the Mishnah. We the get to the case of the Kayan dies, who brings the carbon mincha for him. So the Gemara brings up different halachas regarding this carbon mincha. Um, Rav Yaisi Rav Yaisi said, Adar no Taman, when I was there in Bavel, Shamit Kol Rav Yehuda Shal Shmuel, I heard the voice of Rav Yehuda as he was asking Shmuel the following question. Hifrish Shikloi Vameis, a person that separated the money for the Shmachtas shekel and he dies, what do you do with that money? Amalei Yiplu L'Nadava. That money goes for the Nadavas in the Beis HaMikdash that's brought for Karbanis on the Mizbeach. Another question that he told him, Umaisa Rasiris Ha'eifa, the leftovers of the money for the Asiris Eifa Shaloi, which is the, the, for the Kayin Gadol, what do you do with the leftovers of this money? So Rabbi Yechen and Omar, you can't use it for anything. You have to dispose of it in the Yama Melech. 
No, the leftovers of that money could be used for an adave for the karbanis and the base of mikdash. Right? That's, so that's one halacha regarding the asiris eifa, this carbon mincha of a kohen gadol. Another halacha asiris eifa shal kohen gadol. This asiris eifa of the kohen gadol. So how exactly was it donated? So as I mentioned before, the kohen gadol brought it two halves, divided half in the morning and half in the afternoon. So there's a machlaikis though when he's makdish it. So how are you makdish this carbon? Are you makdish it all as, as one and then later you divide it? Or do you bring it as two halves? Rabbi Yechenen Yechen says, First you divide it into the two halves. It's, it's an isarin, and you divide it into the two halves. And and then you divide, you, you are makdish each half separately in two different klishares. Pshem ben Lakish Omar, Mekatsha, you first makdish it all together as one, and Vachaka Chaitsa Only afterwards do you divide it into two halves, one for the morning and one for at night. So the Gemari is going to bring a Mishnah in Mesech de Menachis, which will be a question on Rabbi Yechenin, and then another part of that Mishnah is going to be a question on Ishlakish. Masnita Pligi al Rabbi Yechenin. There's a Mishnah that seems to argue, or is a question on what Rabbi Yechenin said. What does the Mishnah say? Makriv mechza u mechza ovad. What does it say over there in the Mishnah? That if you had a Kohen Gadol that brought his, his half of his carbon mincha in the morning and then he died in the middle of the day. The other half of his carbon mincha was not brought yet. So what happens? Another person that's des- that, that becomes the new Kohen Gadol on that day, so he has to now dedicate, bring the carbon mincha of that day, he's taking over. So the Mishnah says the new Kohen Gadol is going to be makdish of full carbon mincha, but he only has to bring half of it because the other half was already brought by the other Kohen Gadol on that day. So therefore the new carbon mincha that the new Kohen Gadol is going to be makdish, so the Mishnah says makriv mechza, half of it he's going to bring as a carbon for the afternoon that wasn't brought yet, but a mechza of, the other half is going to, you, you can't use it for anything because the previous Kayin Gadol already brought for the f- first part of the day. So what's the Gemara's question on Rabbi Yechenen? Rabbi Yechenen that says that you have to be makdish, the entire thing. Rabbi Yechenen, sorry, that says that you only makdish half. You only makdish half at a time. So this new Kayin Gadol on this day, why is he being makdish an entire carbon Mincha? And then we say that half of it's going to get lost. Let him only be makdish half. The previous Kayin Gadol already brought his carbon the first part of the day. And now this new Kohen Gadol just has to bring half. So let him be makdish half in that sauce. So you won't have to have half of it that goes to loss. Pasala. So the Gemara answers that according to Rabbi Yechen, and the reason why the Mishnah there says that half goes to law, gets, yeah, you, that you have the entire Mincha, and half of it gets law, you have, is, is, of that, is lost. Before we said that even the money, According to Rabbi Yechenin's opinion, even money that was designated for the carbon mincha of the Kohen Gadol and there's leftovers of that money, what do you do with that money? It can't be used for anything. It can't be used for any carbonus. You have to dispose of it in the Yama Melach. So the same thing over here, according to Rabbi Yechenin, even though it's true that you're maktish half in one klishotis and you're maktish another half in another klishotis, but you did designate the entire carbon mincha for that day. And when you designate it, the entire carbon mincha, the new Kohen Gadol designates the entire carbon mincha just by designating it, so you can't use it anymore for anything. It has a Kedusha, the, at least the, the money of it, the value of it has a Kedusha, and you can't use it for anything. You have to dispose of it in the Yama Melech, just like any monies that was designated for the carbon mincha of a Kohen Gadol. Now the Gemara brings the second half of what it says in that Mishnah, the, the further on in that Mishnah, Masnita Pligi al ben Lakish. What it says further on in that Mishnah is a question on Ishlakish. Why? Because it says there in the Mishnah, Nimtsu Shnei Chatsayin Krevin, Shnei Chatsayin Avudin. It comes out that if such a thing happens, when you had a Kohen Gadol that passed away in the middle of the day, there are going to be two, ha- two halves of a carbon mincha that are being brought as a carbon, and two halves of the carbon mincha that are getting lost. Why is that? The first Kayan Gadol, he brought his half in the morning, and there's another half that he's not bringing, that gets lost. And the new Kayan Gadol as well, there's a half that he's bringing for the afternoon, and another half that gets lost. That's what it says there in the Mishnah. Then with Allah, in the Braise it says in this, Mechza Rishain, 
Umechza Sheini, both of these halves that are now not going to be used for the carbon mincha, what do you do with them? To Ubatsu Rasan, you have to wait until it gets spoiled. In other words, you can't burn it right away. You have to wait until overnight until it gets spoiled. And then the Yetzalabesasrefa. And then you can go ahead and burn it. So the question of the Gemara is, why do you have to wait until it goes out to the Beis Asrefa and burn it? According to Rav Shimon ben Lakish, you were Makdish all the new Kain Gadol. The new Kain Gadol was Makdish's entire Kabe Mincha together at the same time. And the moment he was Makdish the entire Kabe Mincha, from the very first moment, only half of it could be used. The other half can't be used, Bechlal. So this is what's called a Psul Haguf. This half of the Kabe Mincha, right from the first moment, can't be used at all. What's the Allah when there's a psula guf and a carbon? You have to burn it right away. So it should be burnt right away. Why do you have to wait until the next day to burn it? So the Gemara answer is no. That really, even if you weren't makdish yet in a klishadis, but before that, pasar law, the answer over here is, ke Rabbi Shmol, like the opinion of Rabbi Shmol, the Omar Rabbi Shmol said, isarain mekadish. Even before you were makdish in the klishadis, when they measured it, when they measured the amount for this carbon mincha in the measuring uh, cup of the Sarain in the Beis Mikdash, so Rabbi Shmuel says it was makdish right away. It became sanctified for hektish right away even when they just measured it. So now if you say that it becomes sanctified right away when you measure it in this measuring cup of the Sarain, so yes, then because you will makdish the entire thing and you're only using half and you're not using the other half, so the other half you have to burn right away. From the first moment, you're not using it, and therefore it's a psul aguf and you burn it right away. That's the opinion of Rish Lakish. That when you measure it, and this is sodain, right there it all became hectish, and that's why half of it you have to burn right away. But the Tana of this Mishnah though, disagrees with Rabbi Shmuel. The Tana of this Mishnah holds that when you measure it in the measuring cup of the sodain, it doesn't become hectish yet. And therefore, half of it you're going to use for the carbon. Half of it, you, you designated it for the carbon, but it never became hect- fully hectic yet. And if it never became fully hectic yet, it's not going to be, it's not a psul aguf, and you have to wait until the next day until you burn it. Another Allah have been to get to the Asir Seifa. Kesha Koyin, Miskarif, Tchilola, Aveda, when a Koyin comes to do the Aveda for the very first time, this is actually not only a Koyin Gadol. This is, this is actually what's called a Minchas Chinuch. The first day a Kayan Gadol does his Aveda, he has to bring a special carbon mincha for that. So the first time when a Kayan brings in the, the does his Aveda, maybe a Sirisa Eifa Shaloi, he brings a carbon a Sirisa Eifa, and he does the Aveda to be makriv himself. Echad Kayan Gadol, the Echad Kayan Hadiet, both a Kayan Gadol and a Kayan Hadiet, Shaavdu, At Shaloi, Heviu, a Sirisa Eifa Shalahem. They have to bring an Asiris Eifa, this carbon mincha, on that day. But if they did any other Aved in the base of Mikdash before they brought their carbon mincha, Avedas and Kshayda, their Aved is Kasha. Rabmane Boy Meimar, Rabmane wanted to say, Boy Bayoim Sheneskarev Tchilo La Aveda. If on that day, this is the very first day that he's doing his Aved in the base of Mikdash, and also, Boy Bayoim Nismana Li is Kayin Gadl. And he also became a Kayin Gadol on that day. So this person is, for the very first time he's doing his Aveda, he's becoming a Kayin Gadol. So maybe Shtayim, he's going to have to bring two Korbanis Mincha. Achas Lechinuchai. One is for the fact that it's a Minchas Chinuch, for the very first time he's doing the Aveda. And Vachas Lechai Vesayim. And now that he's a Kayin Gadol, a Kayin Gadol has to bring every single day a Korban Mincha, the Minchas Chavitin of the Kayin Gadol. So he has to bring it every single day. Another halacha the Gemara here brings regarding the preparation of this carbon mincha. So when the Pasuk talks about the preparation, it says tufine. Tufine means it's baked. So there in the Pasuk it says tevieno uh, tufine minchas pitim. So what does this mean? Bishas, so the Gemara dashes from this, bishas hava tufine. You could only bake it or prepare it in, in the daytime, which is a time that the carbon could be brought on the Mizbeach. There's no carbonus at night time. So it has to be prepared in the same time that it could be brought. Before Aloysa Shachar, you're not allowed to bake it. You can't prepare it before Aloysa Shachar. Is that true? But what Taninon, we learned in the Mishnah, it says, 
Hamidu Aisa Chavitin Lasis Chavitin. That even before Allah Isa Shachar, they already had the Kohanim that were preparing the Chavitim to prepare the carbon mincha that's going to be brought on that day. So it seems like they could prepare it before Allah Isa Shachar. Om Rabchir Bar Ache. No, they weren't actually baking it yet. Lasis Chamin Lirivucha. They were preparing the hot water to boil it or to cook it, to bake it. So they were preparing the hot water, but they were not yet baking it. Now the Gemara will explain what exactly is this tufine. How did they bake it? What was the process? So there's different opinions here. Rabbi Yisib B'Shem Rab Chanin says, Metagno, they would first fry this carbon mincha, Va'acha and afterwards they baked it. Rabbi Yisib B'Shem Rab Chanin says the opposite. Oifa Isa, first they would bake it, Va'acha Kach Metagno, and then they would fry it. So the Gemara brings a Braise where Tanoim spoke about this and connects it to this Machlaikis. So in the Braise it says, Tufine, what does the word Tufine mean? Te'afeno, no. You should uh, bake it when it's no, when it's already partially baked from before or partially roasted from before. Rabbi Oimer, Oimer, uh, sorry, Rabbi Oimer, Rabbi says, Te'afeno, no'e. You should bake it when it's still in a beautiful, in a good condition. Uh, so uh, that's the second opinion. And the Gemara will explain in a second what this means. Rabdaisa the third opinion, Rabdaisa says, Teyafeno riba. You should bake it many times. So in, in the Bavli it says what this means is that um, Rabdaisa holds that you have to bake it first and then you fry it and then you bake it again after you fry it. So now the Gemara explains, Asian Ilen Plokvisa, Kehanen Plokvisa. The two opinions that we brought here from the Tanoim are connected to the two opinions that we brought from the Amirayim. Why is that? The opinion that says that the word Tufine means you bake it when it's still beautiful. What does this mean? Commando Omar, it's he's following the opinion that says, that first you bake it and then you fry it. What he means to say is if you fry it first, so then it becomes black already, it's not no, it's not raw and beautiful. So therefore, Teifena Noe means that you have to take it raw when it's not yet ba- when it's not yet fried, that is. So first you bake it and then you fry it. Mandama Teifena no, the one that says that you bake it when it's no, when it's already baked, what does he mean? Kemandama metagno, first you fry it, and that's what the no means, it's already fried. And then you bake it. Now the Gemara, one more thing over here, let's uh, finish off the Gemara with this. The Gemara goes back to the Mishnah. What does it say in the Mishnah that a Kohen Gadol that dies? So then you have to bring the Karb Mincha for him, either the Tzibur brings it or privately has to be brought from his Yerushim. So the Gemara says, Loi Saif Dov It's not only if he died. Ela, now the Gemara says, what is this, so what does this mean? Ela Fila Nitma. So now you could say either the Pshat and this is, even if the Kohen Gadol just became Tommy and he can't bring his carbon on that day. So then you have to bring it from the tzibor, or you bring it from someone else. You can't bring the mincha of this kain gadol because he's tame. Or another pshat, va'afila nitchem mum. Or maybe the pshat is not only if he died, even if he got a mum and he can't be a kain anymore. So there's a very big difference. Nitma, he can't serve as a kain gadol today, but he could, he'll be tired again. He'll, he could be a kain gadol in the future. Mom is more similar to a kohen gadol that dies. He's never going to be able to a mum. He has a mum kavua, and he can never be a kohen gadol again. So the Gemara brings a brayso which says this halacha: Tani Rabbi Yisib ben Azar, Rabbi Yudah ben Pazi, that uh, the bar Dalia, I think that's how you read it from a place, or the son of Dalia maybe. Remember over here. Okay, so he said va'fila nitchem mimum. That the pshat here is, just like a kohen gadol that dies, you can't bring his carbon mincha anymore. The same thing also, a kohen gadol that has a mum, you can't bring his mincha anymore. How do you know a kohen gadol that dies, and they did not appoint anyone else to be a kohen gadol for him on that day? That the carbon mincha is brought from the yorishim. That was one opinion in our Mishnah. Tamad Laima, the Pasik says, That is brought from his children. And the pasuk uh, there we quoted before the next pasuk. Vakoyin amesheich tachtav mi bon of yasais as children bring it. Yachol yivienu lachatzayim. I would think that they also bring it like a kohen gadol himself half at a time. Tamad loyma oisa. Pasuk says yasa oisa. They bring it all the whole thing at once. Kula amarti. Divrei Rabbi Yudah. This is Rabbi Yudah's opinion. The Yarshim bring it. Shimon naim. Rabbi Shimon says ein abal emishal tzibur. The tzibur is the one that brings it. Shenema because in that pasuk it concludes and it says chakaylam. This is the chayk forever. What does this refer to? Mi bris krusa loy. This is the Yidin. That the uh, Ebishter makes a bris with the Yidin. The bris goes on Klal Yisrael, not on the Yarshim. 
Then the Pasuk there concludes, Kalil Taktar, that it's Klilak Tara, that this carbon milk of the Kayan Gadol has to be brought completely to be burnt, and it, the leftovers should not be eaten.